We're adding like crazy around here. My kindergartner's learning how to add herself and I wanted to put together some activities that I think you could try at home to help your child learn how to add. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet and addition. That is the talk of the town for my kindergartner. Now, she is just in the basics of learning how to add, but I wanted to give her some ideas and some new ways of learning that simple skill. So I put together a whole bunch of activities that I'm working on this week that really focus on simple addition. But if you have ideas that I haven't thought of that you think I should know about, or maybe even be inspired to try on my own, please let me know down below in the comments. Plus, your comments will be read by other people who stumble across this video and they might get some ideas from you too. In our house, here is what we've been trying. Okay, so you know I like to show you variations on different things that you can do at home. So when you see some of my materials, think of what you might already have and how you can adapt it to use what you do have. So this is an addition tray that I set up. This is just a box, it's actually a reused box, and another little box that I got like at the Target dollar spot. And inside I have some jewels. Now you don't have to use jewels, you can use um, any kind of manipulative, you could use Legos, you could use Hatchimals, <laughs> you can use erasers, whatever you have. I'm using this three compartment box. You could use bowls, you could use um, little gift boxes. You don't even have to use the boxes if you don't want to. I like it because for addition, it's showing three separate compartments and it's gonna be a little bit more visual coming up when we do the actual addition. This other item right here is a set of flashcards that came from the Target dollar spot. So you probably, if you look really, really fast, be able to find them. They come back every now and then. It's something they've been carrying for a couple of years now, especially around back to school time. And it's just a little pouch filled with dry erase math problem cards. All different kinds of problems, super colorful, super fun. And it also comes with a dry erase marker too. So it's perfect for traveling, restaurant kits. You can make your own flashcards. You can write them down on a piece of paper, um, whatever you have. But I just really like these because they're kind of fun and, and colorful. So what I'll do is I'll give the tray contents to my daughter. She She's already done this and she actually liked it. And she gets to pick out one card that she wants to do for practice. I usually will set the other cards aside just so it's not so overwhelming. And then she'll work the math problems. So I let her pick one color for the first number, which in this case is five. So she'll put five jewels in this first compartment. Then the next number plus five, she'll take the other color and put them in the next compartment. Then because this is introductory math for her and this is a very new process, I will go ahead and have her mix them up to the last compartment. And she'll usually do it compartment by compartment and counting as she goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then she'll record her answer on the card. She'll just take the jewels back out and repeat the process until the whole card is complete. This may seem like a whole bunch of work just for doing one simple math problem, but what your child is learning is actually what addition is. It's taking two parts and putting them into one complete whole at the end. It's becoming a very visual and a very concrete way of understanding what addition actually is. And when she, she or he is able to take all of those things and move them themselves with the manipulatives, it reinforces the concept. Experiment with this, try with different materials. If you have erasers, paper clips, Legos, whatever you have, and it's the same um, kind of concept in a three part compartment here, and it'll be a lot of fun and you can work some math that way. Now if I just take away the flashcards and I look around for other things in my house, I found some dominoes. I did a whole video about using dominoes in math and other activities. So you can watch that video. It's a little bit older, it's from last year. These dominoes came from the Dollar Tree, but what's amazing is one, they came from the Dollar Tree, but two, they're already kind of ready-made addition problems or subtraction as the case may be. I'm gonna move my jewels out and you can have your child pick one domino. Maybe it's this one which has five on one side and three on the other. And then that becomes their math problem. How many in all? And they can work it out with the manipulatives with five on this side and three on this side, or they can even count the dots and write down their answer. I would highly recommend having a place to record this so that they know what they're doing. So you would actually write on the piece of paper, five plus three equals, and then they can use manipulatives to count, or they can even just use the dots on the dominoes to count. It's just a really cool way to actually use dominoes in learning. I'll put the link down to the dominoes video in the description box so you can take a look at that if you wanna get some more ideas on how to use this really, really fun tool. Next, I have some math dice for you and you can get math dice in all sorts of different forms. This one happened to come from the Target dollar section. It was $3 for the little bag filled with these colorful dice. If I find some that are very similar, 
on Amazon. I'll put them in my Amazon store for you to check out. This set actually has one cube that has an equal sign on it and one cube that has a plus and minus sign. So very simple of just setting this up for the math equation, having them take and roll to make their math problem. This one happened to be six plus four. What's fun is it's just kind of a chance of what numbers you're gonna get. And now they do the math, six plus four, like that. Now you're pretty limited to a certain kind of range of numbers with these, but if you want more advanced math, maybe numbers 10 and up, they have those available too. I will put those in my Amazon store for sure in case you need some more advanced math, but this is perfect for starting out and for beginners. For this one, I'm getting out a notebook. I love my composition books. You can use them for so many different things. My set of do a dot markers that have seen better days, it's, it's tearing apart, but still a great tool. Love these, I actually have the smelly kind, that, which are a lot of fun too. And then just a marker because I'm gonna do some writing. So on a piece of paper, I have the number 10 here in the center and it's my child's job to figure out which equation equals 10. So this is a little bit more labor intensive on the prep work for you, but it can be a lot of fun for your child and you can do a lot of different variations on this. Next step is to take a do a dot marker of their choice and their job would be to mark out which problem equals 10 on the whole entire page. And of course you can add more problems depending on the skill level of your child, or you can add less if it's a little bit more difficult or a harder number for your child to figure out. If they need some help, they can go ahead and use those manipulatives again, maybe those erasers or those jewels, so they can help better count out the math problems. For this one, you can have a little bit of fun in the variety of how you do it. So I just went ahead and wrote different numbers all over the page. I'm still gonna be using that do a dot marker, but this time we need a math problem. So maybe use those flashcards or maybe use the dice but you could take the flashcard like this and have them go down the problem and then stamp out the answer. So four plus two is six, and so you would take your marker and do the six. Six plus three, forgot to write in a nine, and you do the nine. And you can make sure that you have the right numbers, unlike I did, for the flashcard before your child does it. Once again, it's just an interactive way to really get moving and to use some fun materials when you're adding. Another tool that we've been using that I've really liked, and I've showed this to you guys before, this is from Lakeshore Learning. It's a hands-on number bar set, and it's just under $5, because it's actually part of a larger set, but you can buy this, this mini pack. A while back, I did a video on all kinds of ways to use this, but I have found it really, really helpful with my five-year-old and kind of exploring what makes certain numbers. And in essence, what she's doing is adding. So let's say, for example, she wanted to make the number 10. She would pull over the 10. And actually, I just put this in an Instagram video because we have these in our restaurant kit and she was doing it at the restaurant. It's really, really cute. I have some real life restaurant kit action going on right now. We're making six, huh? So she would pick a number and then she'd figure out what makes 10. So she'd find the nine and then she'd add a one or she'd try the six and then maybe she would try the five with it. And then she would see that six plus five is definitely more than 10. So then that would result in her trying again. And she would do this until there was no more possibilities. And what was great about this is that she could actually see what makes up a 10. And then she could try a different number. Maybe she wanted to try what makes up six and go so on and so forth. So she got a really good concrete understanding of what makes up another number. And then she could also count the squares if she was kind of unsure. And she would get it wrong every now and then, but these are so great because they're self-correcting the way they line up perfectly. These are also equivalent to maybe a Montessori number rods or um, you know building with other kinds of manipulatives like Unifix blocks or Legos. Um, so those are some other ways that you can do the same kind of concept. I happen to like these, one because they're affordable, <laughs> two because they're flat, three because because they're colorful and I like that they do have the um, dividers on the actual number rod so that she could see the units. I did find a really fun thing online that I didn't print out, but I wanted to mention because I thought it was a really awesome idea. And that is a fun edition bingo game. I found this one on Mama on this website. So you can go and print it out for free. Yes, it's free. And it's an amazing printout where you can have your own edition um, game. It comes with the counters, it comes with the different cards. You can play along, another sibling can play along, and you can call out the math problem, and then your child has to find out the answer and mark it on their bingo card. Excellent resource, definitely worth checking out. The link is down below in the description box.
Don't forget to leave me a comment down below leaving me your suggestions and ideas because you have the best ones. Also check out my Instagram page where I'm posting activities that we do every week all the time and I think you'll really enjoy that. Click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.